Hello and welcome to another PAP Problems video. My name is Helena and I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials at the University of Oxford. And today I'm going to be taking you through one possible way to solve another question from the 2011 PAP paper. So today we're going to be taking a look at question number 25, which is something that I like to call a logic question. So this sort of question doesn't test any sort of really intense physics or math skills. It's more about how you can problem solve and reason your way through a question. So let's take a look. So a packing company supplies storage boxes in three different sizes, small, medium and large. All three types of box have the same ratio of width to length and height to length. And then we're given a list of statements that tell us facts about the different size boxes and their relationships. And then what are we being asked to find? We are being asked to find the lengths of the three different boxes and the ratios of the widths to heights and the widths to lengths. OK, so the really important thing in these sort of questions is making sure you set it up really clearly so you can follow what's going on. So to start with, I'm just going to draw myself a little sketch of a box, just a really rough sketch. And I'm going to use this to label the dimensions as I'm defining them. So we've got a width, a length, and a height that I'm calling W, L, and H. Okay. And what else are we told about the boxes? We're told that they have the same ratios width to length and height to length. So I'm just going to write these in a mathematical way up here. So the width to length ratio. That can be written as the width being a constant times the length, where I'm defining the constant here as x. And this is the same for all three sized boxes. And the same for the height to length, which I'm writing as h equals y times l. So again, another constant here. OK, so let's set up how we are going to define these different dimensions here for each of the different sized boxes. So what have we got? We've got a small box, we've got a medium, and we have a large. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna define the width using a W, and I'm gonna show that it's for the small box by using a subscript of an S. And for the medium, I'm gonna use a subscript of an M, and as you probably guessed, for the large is gonna be an L. And I'm going to do the same for the heights and for the lengths. Brilliant. So now we've set up how we're defining the uh, letters that we're using in our problem. Let's have a look at these statements here. OK, so A, eight small boxes fit neatly inside one medium box. OK, so we can see that we're talking about volumes here. So I'm just going to define the volumes in a very similar fashion for each of the boxes. And we know that the volume of a box is equal to its width times its length times its height. OK. So back to statement A, and we can write that as an equation. So eight small boxes, so eight times the volume of the small, is equal to the volume of one medium box. And we can write that in terms of the widths, lengths, and heights. So we have eight times the width of the small times its length times its height is equal to the width of the medium times the length of the medium times the height of the medium. OK, next statement. The length of the small box is the same as the height of the medium. So from that, we get a nice little equality. So the length of the small is equal to the height of the medium. OK. C. The base area, so the width times the length of a large box, is nine times, so there's actually a typo here in this question. So it should be larger, because obviously the large box isn't going to be nine times smaller than the small box is going to be larger. OK, so the base area, so the width times the length of the large, so that's the width of the large times the length of the large, is nine times smaller than the base area of the small box. So nine of the small ones can fit in one large. So times the width of the small times the length of the small. OK. Next statement, D. All lengths, the, the length of all three boxes added together is 2.4 metres. OK, that's nice. So length of the small times the length of the medium 
at add the length of the medium, add the length of the large, is 2.4 meters. Brilliant. And finally, E. The width of the medium box is twice the height of the small box. T H S. Excellent. And so what are we trying to find? So we want to find the lengths. So each of the L's. And we want to find two ratios. So we want to find the width to height ratio and the width to length ratio. So the width to length ratio I've already defined up here as being x. So I'm just going to write this down here so we know what we're looking for. And in a similar way to how I defined the ratios at the top, I'm going to do another equation for this. So I'm going to define the ratio between the width and the heights to be z, and that can be written in this way mathematically here. Okay, so we've set up our problem. We've puzzled out some equations from the list of statements that we were given. So let's have a look at seeing how we can solve these equations to get the quantities that we want. So let's start from the first one. Let's start from equation A. So we want to find the lengths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ratios that we defined at the top, and I'm just going to copy them down underneath here so I don't have to keep lifting the page up. There we go. So I'm going to write this equation here all in terms of the lengths for the boxes. So if I do that, I would have that 8 times x times ls times its length times y times ls equals the width of the medium, which is x times lm times lm times y lm. Getting a bit cramped there. OK. And here I can see on both sides they have an x and they both have a y, so they can cancel because they're just constants. So if we tidy this up, we have 8ls cubed equals lm cubed. Okay. And if we take the cube root, we can see that 2 times the length of the small is the length of the medium. So I'm just going to put a little ring around that because I feel like that's going to come in handy later on. And I'm going to move on to having a look at the next equation here that we've got B. Okay, so here we have the length of the small is the height of the medium. We can write this height again in terms of the lengths, which is what I'm going to do here. So the length of the small equals the equals y times the length of the medium. But here we've already found an equation that relates ls and lm. So if we compare the two here, we can see that y is in fact a half. So that ratio between the heights and the lengths is a half. So this isn't one of the ratios that we've been explicitly asked to find, but again, I feel like this is going to come in useful later on in the question, so I'm going to put a, a box around it here. Okay, moving on to the next statement, we have C. So again, I'm going to write everything in terms of lengths using these ratio equations here. So x times the length of the large times its length equals 9 times x times the length of the small times the length of the small. And again, we can cancel through the x's and tidy this up. So we get the length of the large squared equals 9 times the length of the small squared. And if we take the square root of that, and obviously we need to take the positive square root because having a negative length just doesn't make sense, we get that the length of the large equals 3 times the length of the small. Brilliant. So we're getting some relationships here from the equations. All right. So the next one, let's have a look at D. So this is summing the lengths together and it gives you a numerical value. So I'm just going to copy this across onto my next page so I don't lose track of where we are. And again, I'm going to copy the ratios, equations, uh, so I don't have to keep flicking back and forwards. All right, so here 
we have equations relating all of the different lengths. They're these two equations at the bottom here. So I'm going to call this one number one and this one number two. And I'm going to copy them across here. So QLS equals LM. And number two is LL equals three LS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute these in here. So doing that, you get one LS plus two LS plus three LS equals 2.4 meters. So summing those together, we get six LS equals 2.4 meters. And therefore the length of the small box must be 0 0.4 meters. There we go, we have our first length. And then we can simply substitute that back into these equations and find that the length of the medium equals 0.8 meters and the length of the large equals 1.2 meters. And if we sum those three up to check, we get 2.4. Excellent, that's what we want. So we have found all the lengths that we want. So let's put a tick next to that. And next we need to find these two ratios. So let's look at the next equation that we have created, which is E. So I'm just going to copy that across here. So the width of the medium equals two times the height of the small. What should we do with this? Well, again, let's write it all in terms of the lengths using these ratios. So here we have that X times the length of the medium equals two times Y times the length of the small. But again, we have an equation relating the length of the medium to the length of the small. It's up here. So let's substitute that in. We get 2x times the length of the small equals 2y times the length of the small. So we can clearly divide by 2. We can divide by the length here. And we find that x equals y. Well, earlier, we found that y equals a half. So therefore, now we know that x equals a half as well. And that was one of the ratios that we wanted to find here. That was the ratio between the width and the length. So you can tick that one up. So we're left with this final one here. We want to find z. So I'm just going to write out that equation relating the widths to the heights. And again, I'm going to write this in terms of the lengths. But to do this, I'm going to use just the general ratios that we've got this time because this isn't box size specific. This is the same for all size boxes. So if I do that, I get x times the length equals z times y times the length. Again, we can cancel the lengths here and we find that x over y equals z. Well, we've just shown that x equals y. So therefore, this must be 1. And we can say that z equals 1 as well. And that is the final thing that we wanted to find. So we can tick that off nicely. And here we have our answer. So we have our lengths. We have our ratio between the widths and the lengths of the boxes. And we have our ratio between the widths and the heights of the boxes. So that's just one way that you could possibly solve this question. This is the way that I find the most easy to work with and follow. You might have a slightly different way. That's entirely up to you. But I hope this was useful to show you one possible way of solving it. And I hope to see you next week where Catherine will be taking you through question four from the same paper. So that's question four from 2011. So if you want to have a go at that before you watch next week's video, please do. Otherwise, hope to see you there.